what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and this one will break down what's going on with the overall market what's going on with nvidia why this thing is up seven percent in the after hours and how all of this could affect tesla stock spy the qqq and a couple of tickers out there i'm also going to break down what's happening with some big news that came out affecting tesla and some other important factors and how all of this could affect once again the share price going into tomorrow as we're going to see some madness in the stock market in my opinion but before I break anything down with all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things before starting. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks plus a $50 cash reward. The offer ends in just about eight days, so check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, guys, so Tesla's up quite nicely in the after hours. If you look at Tesla, it's up about 1.4%, currently testing the 240 area of resistance, and it's looking quite good so far. But the question is, how will Tesla move going into tomorrow, in my opinion, and what should we, we be watching for moving forward? And right now, the whole market is actually pumping, right? We have SPY pumping right now up 0.5%. SoFi is up 1.6%. The IWM is up just about 0.5%. Uh, you know, most of these are up quite nicely. Apple is kind of flat right now, but the QQQ is up almost 1%. NVIDIA is pumping. It's up 7%. This is dictating the market right now. We're seeing a lot of tech stocks following NVIDIA during this pump. But why is NVIDIA up so big and why is this affecting Tesla? I'm going to talk about this in a few. So for NVIDIA, first off, okay, they absolutely killed it when it comes to their earnings. They beat on EPS, okay? We got $2.70 as the adjusted EPS beating the estimation of $2.09, big beat on EPS, good for them. And then their revenue was $13.51 billion. That's much higher than the $11.22 billion that was expected. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, typically beats are not that big in the market. And this was a pretty significant beat. And here's exactly why. So they beat on revenue, right, for the current estimation. But the Q3 guidance, we were expecting, once again, a 12 billion billion dollars in revenue for q3 remember that number we actually already beat that for this quarter alone so they did very very well for this quarter we were expecting a technically a decline and instead they told us that hey that's not the case we're going to be raising our guidance once again to 16 billion instead nvidia is raising their guidance it's that strong guidance for the future a strong forecast for the next quarter and overall their numbers just absolutely crushed it their sales were very very strong and their cfo said that there's very high demand continuing so did the ceo it's just like what john ford said it's a wow moment very very impressive stuff from nvidia there's also a 25 billion dollar share buyback that was approved once again bullish news and their eps their revenue beat and they're once again giving us a very strong q3 guidance 16 billion is what we're expecting for revenue for the next quarter very strong stuff from them Jensen, the CEO, came out and he said, a new computing era has begun. Companies worldwide are transitioning from uh, gen general purpose to accelerated computing and generative AI, which is once again very, very bullish. Very, very excited. Very excited what NVIDIA is trying to do. And we're continuing to see them beat over and over again. So the stock market is likely going to gap up, including Tesla tomorrow, thanks to all this bullish news. But I want to warn everyone that we have something else that's going to affect us. Yes, the market may gap up tomorrow and try to push. But we also have right over here initial jobless claims coming out later on. With initial jobless claims coming out, we could see this affect the market to some extent. We're going to find out what ends up happening with this. And then on top of that, we also have the Jackson Hole uh symposium going on it's not going to be that crazy nothing too big until friday however so this may not have that big of an effect on us but initial jobless claims could affect the market to some extent now for friday that's when things get serious not only do we have the jackson hole event but we have jerome powell speaking for friday so we'll see if this guy is very hawkish or not it's going to be very telling for how the market ends up moving going forward so get ready for that that's going to be important for friday and besides that for tomorrow we have initial jobless claims, a couple of other things as well, and the market should still gap up nevertheless. Now, looking at Tesla, we have some good news that came out. There's a comparison between the Cybertruck and the Ford F-250 Super Duty. Once again, you can see their dimensions are quite similar, but this angle is not really the best to compare them uh, with from there. So 
once again, you could see it. Uh, but what I'm noticing that's very interesting about the media is we're getting lots of headlines about the Cybertruck. It's getting lots of hype. It's getting lots of excitement. And that is nothing but good news for Tesla. Now, to add on to this, let me just mention that um, Tesla is continuing to grow as time goes on. The Cybertruck is once again looking very, very nice. We're getting more uh, information about its specs and things like this. And if anything, uh, they revealed that the Cybertruck may be a little bit less than 19 feet long, but the, the bed is going to be longer than about six feet anyways. Not bad for them. Uh, it's a little bit longer than like the Ford F-150 bed technically, but once again, the way at which they're, they're structured is a little bit different. Uh, right here, it looks very, very nice, beautiful design, and we're seeing more and more hype and news around this. I'm very excited to see how this is going to play out. Also seeing it being compared to other cars out there. So very cool stuff. Uh, moving forward, there is this tweet that came out, not really a tweet, but just like a message from Elon Musk. Musk has teased that the Tesla Cybertruck production candidate is right here. And you can see, I think this is him inside of it. And you can see what the design looks like. This could be it. And it looks very, very awesome. Uh, looks very, very cool. looks very durable. And I can't wait for this. There's a lot of excitement and a big backlog of orders. Once this comes out, this could improve the share price of Tesla and its performance. Very, very exciting stuff. And actually, it was a tweet. You can see it right here. Musk was driving in it right here, which is awesome stuff as well. Now, as far as some data goes for Tesla, one thing that's not that great is the Model Y inventory levels are still going up. Is this solely because of production? Well, the production is playing a role in why it's going up. But it's not just that. We typically see the Model Y inventory level is not that high. Typically, they come and like maintain levels below like 3,000 or even much less than that. And it's getting very close to this like 4,300 area right here, which tells me that there could be a slowdown in demand for the Model Y. And we will see if Tesla does anything with their prices to adjust to this. I don't know if they will do this, so just be on the lookout in case something like this comes out from the news. But besides this, the Model X inventory levels are going up a little bit more. So are the three, but the Model s is still doing okay so nothing too crazy overall uh, but i just want to mention that some of their models are seeing increases in their inventories which is not the best of signs uh, demand could be slowing a little bit but this is what tesla was telling us about this quarter so so far it's not really that big of a surprise and we'll see what happens during the next few months when tesla has its next delivery report very very soon now for volume, 100 million in volume was not bad for Tesla. As we saw Tesla uh, gap down off some bad news about production cuts in Germany before this thing ended up getting a bounce with the market, which is very awesome to witness. NVIDIA also tried to bounce a little bit as we saw some anticipation of some good earnings. And boy, did that end up coming in uh, just as expected for a lot of these investors saying that it's going to pump. That was awesome to witness. But the thing to remember is that if you were playing NVIDIA's earnings, that's great if you made money. If not, you know, it, it is still a gamble nonetheless. And, it, you know, you want to be putting in money that you're willing to lose if you were to play it, non financial advice. So don't feel bad if you ended up missing an opportunity. There's always going to be another opportunity ahead of us for tomorrow and beyond. And there will be more opportunities for Tesla as the share price is continuing to grow. Look at the price versus the short volume. Not bad for Tesla currently at this like 53% area. And then on top of this, you can see Morgan Stanley gave Tesla an equal weight rating. Despite that, the price price ratio is still starting to go up a little bit. Tesla is starting to perform the market or outperform the market a little bit more than before. And it's gaining some relative strength. On Thursdays, Tesla's green about 47.8% of the time. It's not the best of day historically, but we tend to see more volume and a lot more uh, volatility during the third and also during the uh, sixth hour of the trading day. So watch it very carefully during those time frames. And then finally, last but not least, the short interest started to go up a little bit just a few days ago. It's about 41 million. But then that was just about two days ago as we started to see Tesla pump a bit. So with Tesla pumping, we could have seen some short covering uh, continue to help Tesla push up. Short covering could help Tesla even more as this thing is being shorted even more than before. So that could be another factor to help Tesla go uh, even higher. Maybe that's part of why Tesla pumped today. And we will see if this was reduced or not. But for now, let's just talk about the charts. How are things looking? So looking at NVIDIA, this thing is still holding up very nicely, still up over 5.7%. Uh, it could still bounce very nicely, but I do believe the market is going to try to gap up tomorrow. We're going to be watching spy on all these different tickers just to be more precise. But for Tesla in particular, okay, I think there's a good chance Tesla's going to try to gap up somewhere tomorrow, very close to this like 240 area. And we might see it try to get a breakout just to start us off and retest like 242. 
One of the issues I do see with the market, though, is that we're entering new territories, which we're not really used to. So there's no guarantee the market is going to sustain at these levels. So we have to be very careful simultaneously. So just to be honest with you all, um, if Tesla does try to pump a little bit, you're going to be watching 242. Could we break and hold this? If it breaks above this, you're going to be watching around 244, this entire 244 zone. If that breaks 245.75 to 245.9, it's going to be tested, then 247.5. I believe that what's very probable is Tesla might make it a pop, a gap up and a pop by the time we open in the morning. But I don't know if Tesla is going to sustain these levels because of the fact that the market could, and you could technically argue the market, the market is kind of like overbought. So it might push up to about either 242, maybe even 244 to 245, reject off that and come right back down and then retest these levels. Maybe the breakout gets a retest around this 238 area, then it bounces from here. With nvidia and we get a very flat day from there but overall i still think tesla can close a little bit in the green we just might see it pop drop down bounce a little bit and then trade a little sideways from there i think that's the most probable outcome for tesla now just to be safe when this thing does try to pop see if tesla could break and hold these resistance levels if it holds the drop may not be as bad but i'm still anticipating something like that to, to play out so once again i mean it's very probable tesla's going to try to open like this tomorrow uh, try pushing up to either this zone or maybe a little higher. Reject off that and then just try a little sideways from here and just get used to these new levels. Could even drop down to retest the breakout area as time goes on. Uh, and then you have to remember we have Jerome Powell speaking for Friday. So I don't know if the market's going to slow down a bit because of that in anticipation of Powell saying something that's not that great. So we'll see about that. But I do see something like this being very probable. I still think Tesla could, should get a nice pop in the morning nonetheless. For SPY, I see something very similar going on. Basically, I have this already drawn out for you, like a little pop by the time we open to retest 446. We have some strong resistance around there. If that fails us, watch it come down to a little bit under 444 to maybe retest the breakout area at 443.5. Bounce off that and some sideways price action for a decent day. But if this thing were to gap up and push up higher, we could see it do something like this where it goes all the way up to 448. I mean, I'm not really counting on that. That's going to be tricky. It really depends on how hard this thing could hold and how much it could bounce by. But I'm not 100% sure about that. I would say 446 needs to be watched before 448. And if it breaks down, watch support around 445 and then 444 being major support. If that breaks, watch the previous breakout area I supported 443.5 then 442 below that. I'm looking for a pop in the morning, maybe a bit of a drop, a little bounce after that and some sideways price action for a decent day, maybe a somewhat green day. But it's going to be kind of flat and maybe it's not closed that strongly because of Powell speaking for Friday. The market could see some fear anticipating that. So just be very careful and open minded nonetheless. For NVIDIA, the key resistance is going to be around this 520 area. And then the key supports at 500 currently. If that breaks, don't forget there's like 290 I'm sorry, 495, 490, then we have like 480 below that. It's currently trying to hold at 495. I think it's going to try to hold around these levels for the time being, get another pop in the morning, come down and just start trading a little bit sideways as time goes on before it starts to cool off just a little bit. But overall, I still think that NVIDIA is going to get a nice open tomorrow, a little pop before this thing starts to cool off a little bit. Overall, it's still doing quite well. It should close green tomorrow, looking very, very strong relative to the market. For the QQQ, it's the same thing. This thing may get a pop to about this like 374 to 375 area by the time we open tomorrow. Uh, come back down. It may come down to this like imbalance area where the previous breakout was. Maybe not that low. So like 368 to 370 could be retested. A bounce off that and some sideways price action. I don't know if we're going to get a sell off at the very end though because of Powell though. I don't know if this is going to happen or not. Like something like this or if we just stop around 370. It's got to be one of those two. I'm leaning more in this, like this direction. So make sure you're open-minded nonetheless. For Apple, okay, Apple right now is a little weak. It's kind of trading sideways around this 182 area. And that could be a thing that slows the market down a little bit because Apple pumps so hard without getting much of a retracement. So Apple might end up, okay, uh, getting a little pop to 182, then rejecting. If it breaks below 180, watch 179 to be retested. If that ends up failing us, then watch it come down to about 178.5, which is where the breakout area was. If Apple starts sinking a little bit, this could be the thing that slows the market down just a little bit because Apple was quite overbought. So just be open mind and just be careful when we open tomorrow. So look for a little pop for a drop on Apple. It could pop to about 182 plus, come back down to about 180, then break down to the 179s, if not 178.5. Just to be safe, make sure you are well aware of this. Uh, anyways, uh, 
that's pretty much it for the majority of the stocks out there. And once again, for Tesla, it's not looking bad whatsoever. Could still get a very, very nice open and etc. I still really like the trend Tesla's on. It's just that what's tricky about the market is that we're entering these new territories without getting much of a pullback. And for that reason, entering too many new territories at once or too quickly could lead the market to slow down a little bit. Spy did not really uh, get too affected by the 444 area, which is major resistance. So I do expect us to likely come back down there anyway. So maybe a little pop from open and a little drop after that seems like the most probable outcome. And regardless of which way the market goes, always watch the levels just to give you a better gauge of what you're looking at. And always look at those previous breakout areas to give you a good idea of where on earth the market could go. Anyways, now let's talk about the charts for just a couple of other things. Very, very quickly, I want to make this video quick. So looking at something else such as, I don't know, we're going to go to like uh, Microsoft. Watch for a little pop and then it drops to about a retest of like 330 before this thing tries to bounce. I'm going to be watching for this little drop right here for a retest of the 20 EMA before it bounce. That seems very probable. AMD is up quite nicely, just like NVIDIA. So watch for it to try to hold these levels. Could come down to 109, then bounce off that. But so far, not too bad. Netflix, it's currently testing very close to 430. It might, it could break below this and retest like 425 and then try to bounce. But I'm going to be watching 425. It is looking a little weaker as it was quite overbought for some time today. The dollar came down quite a bit, which is helping the market push a bit. But the dollar is still... Uh, in my opinion, forming this like somewhat bullish looking divergence. It may get a bounce. It depends on if the dollar tries to bounce off this area or not. 103.3. Uh, if the dollar maybe like gaps down to about 103 flat, it could also do that where this imbalances uh, 103 flat and then it tries to bounce off that. That could be the thing that causes the market to like uh, start off very strong and then start to slow down a little bit as we're entering the new territories. So watch the dollar very carefully. For Google Watch, 375, I'm sorry, uh, 135 breaks. Sorry about that, guys. 135. If that breaks, you're going to be watching 136 flat. Watch for a potential rejection around there. If it comes back down, watch the breakout to be retested around 133. Then there's 132 below that and a bounce after that could be very probable. That seems very possible for Google. So watch it very carefully just to be safe. For Amazon, Watch this thing retest about 138. I think the 138s could be tested tomorrow. And it may end up coming back down to about 135.7, then bounce off that and close very flat, maybe a little green. But that is still very possible for it to come down and get that the bounce. For Meta, you're going to be watching 302, then 305. It could test that area first before it comes down. Then watch for a retest of this breakout area around this like 297 to 298 area. And then if that breaks, you know, we have the imbalance down in the lower 290s. So it, it might get a pop, then drop, then a bounce after that and close very flat. I think that's what I'm seeing for Meta as well. So in the market, yes, we could push more, but I just want to warn everyone that we're entering these new resistance areas that are like new pieces of territory. So the market needs to be very careful at these levels. And the best thing to do is to remain as calm, cool, and collected as possible. All right, guys. So thank you for listening. Uh, watch your levels very carefully. Know that there's going to be some crazy volatility tomorrow. And just remember that Jerome Powell is going to be speaking on Friday, very early during the day, a little bit after the market opens on Friday. So the market could be, you know, a little bit apprehensive. It could even slow down a little bit at the end. So that's the reason why I'm talking about, you know, these types of formations. All right. So be prepared for that. Do what you have to do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Testing the market to the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright. And peace out.